Hi, my name is Tamal Gutnik, and welcome to the Octopus Lab in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Octopuses are fascinating experimental animals. They're one of the most developed invertebrates. They have a central nervous system around the esophagus and an extensive peripheral nervous system in the arms and mantle. Using these, they perform fast color and texture changes of the skin and control the movement of their flexible body and arms. The extraordinary mobility of the octopus arm raises the very interesting question of control. As a muscular hydrostat, it lacks any rigid internal or external skeleton. Each arm contains up to a few hundred suckers, and each sucker is full of mechano and chemosensors. As the octopus moves around its tank exploring, its arms probe the environment in a manner thought to be autonomous. When we look at two of the best studied arm movements, the motor primitives reaching and fetching, we see that reaching is simplified to a feed-forward command that causes a bend to propagate along the arm. In fetching, pseudo-joints are created on the arm to bring an object to the mouth. In fact, movement control is simplified by reducing the degrees of freedom. Past studies on octopus often use the innate hunting behavior of the animal to perform a variety of discrimination learning tasks or to test the sensory capabilities of the animals. One thing that past studies found the animals to be rather incapable of was uh, any type of learning that required the animals to either perform a strict operant task where you have to perform a series of movements or to perform any task where the animals had to know where one or several of their arms actually were. While this hunting behavior worked well to investigate several questions on discrimination learning, several other interesting topics could not be solved using this paradigm. We wanted to design a task where the animal had to use a single arm in a series of movements and uh, by doing so we want to not only look at the operant task but also at the level of control the animal has over a single arm. We developed a three choice maze that fit on the top of the home tank. The animal had to insert a single arm through the central tube, out of the water, and choose the visually marked goal compartment to get a food reward. So here you can see one of our animals interacting with the maze. Six of our seven animals learned the task. Success was significantly correlated to seeing the goal compartments. And we saw that successful trials often took longer than unsuccessful ones. When looking at the movement of the arm inside the maze, we could see two distinct strategies. The movements that we called straight were faster and resembled bent propagation and could possibly be feed forward. But the trials that were successful more often used a search movement, the kind of peripheral movements that you can see in hunting and foraging. Indeed, towards the end of the experiment, animals used this strategy more often. So what we're actually looking at is the octopus centrally controlling a peripheral search movement. Our study is the first to show that octopus can use central nervous system information, in our case visual information, to determine the position of an arm and guide it to a specific location using a movement that isn't restricted to a few degrees of freedom. This work was supported by the European Union FP7 Project Octopus.